what we're going to talk about is a little bit about burns, the different types, uh, how you can assess for that. When we start talking about the different types of burns, uh, the one thing to keep in mind regardless is that even with a third degree burn, the patient's still going to be in a lot of distress. They're going to have a lot of pain that goes with this. Some people are more tolerant of pain than others, but it's going to be there. And that's one of our main prerogatives is to try and try to control that as best as possible and manage that as best as we can. When we look at the burns themselves, there are basically four different types with a little bit of subset to them. The first one is the epidermal type of burn, which we also call a first degree burn. For the most part, it just involves that outer layer of the skin, which for all of us is just packed dead cells. Um, there's not a lot of moisture there. In fact, there's hardly any at all, which is the reason why we have that barrier between the outside and the inside and keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out and also keeps moisture and as a result, bacteria from crossing between our body and the external environment. Now, with that, it turns very red. Uh, it tends to heal very easily, but this is, for all intents and purposes, a sunburn. There's really not going to be a whole lot of calls that we're going to get for a particular sunburn, unless there's some other complicating issues that go along with it. Uh, maybe, you know, trauma involved or maybe an airway issue because it's a flash burn or, or something like that. But otherwise, just for your typical first degree burn, we don't see a whole lot of these cases per se EMS wise. The ones we're going to see a little bit more often are what we call your second and third degree burns. And there's actually a fourth degree burn as well. The second degree burn, there's two different variables of this. One is what we call superficial partial thickness. And that one is, if you think of it kind of as the, the dermal layer, so you've got your epidermal layer like this, and then below that you've got a much thicker dermal layer. Well, think of that dermal layer kind of cut in half. So you've got an upper half and a lower half. When that burn goes all the way through the epidermis and gets into that top half of the dermal layer, right, causes a few more problems. And with that, this is the type of burn that you're going to see blisters. This is the type of burn that you're going to have some moisture to the skin as well. This is also going to be very painful because now you've actually gotten down into kind of the meat of the skin, if you will. And a lot of the nerve ends are very much exposed from the damage and the depth of this burn. These hurt probably the most out of all of them because of that uh, characteristic. Most of these people will heal again very, very well. There's a very low incidence of kind of uh, complications and scarring. The only thing that we have to be careful of is that with those blisters that are present, that we try to keep them intact as much as possible. The, uh, the problem with it is that when you're in normal care, we may inadvertently pop some, and if that happens, it happens. But the intact skin is a good retardant against infection, so we try to minimize the infection as much as possible by keeping those intact. Now, you go through that top half of the dermis, and now you get into that second or bottom half, if you will, of the dermal layer. Now it's what's called a, a deep partial thickness burn, still considered by all intents and purposes second degree, quote unquote. But... Now that you've gotten through a much further portion of that skin layer, this is the one that's not going to be moist. This is going to be dry skin. It's going to be white, pale. Uh, there may be some surrounding blisters to the area around the burn that are still second degree, kind of that superficial partial thickness. But this area in here, you're going to have a diminished sensation. They're still going to feel it, but it's not going to be as painful because as we've gotten deeper, we've kind of burned away more nerve endings. So this area doesn't have as much sensation to it because there's just not a response that can be picked up by the nervous system. These people, when they heal, they will have a lot of scarring to them. There will be a very high chance of infection, and it already has been infected by the time we get there. And that's what you got to keep in mind. When we're treating these people, we're going to try to prevent any further infection by covering them up, putting those sterile dressings on, trying to cool the burn process, all that type of thing. But infection's already set in. We're just minimizing it by covering up uh, what we have presenting to us. The third degree burns, uh, which are also called full thickness burns, they're called full thickness because now it involves the entire epidermis and the dermis and usually gets down into the sub-Q layer 
subcutaneous layer of the skin. So this is where all the fat and the blood vessels are located that kind of feed the upper layers of that skin. Here you've burned off the nerve endings altogether. So if you press or palpate directly on that third degree burn area, your patient really doesn't even know you're doing it for the most part. The problem is, is that you will have surrounding second degree and first degree burn areas that are still painful. So this person's still gonna be screaming. They're still gonna be in a lot of pain and in a lot of distress. So we still need to deal with that. But the third degree burn in and of itself is deadened, charred, leathery, very inflexible type of skin. That's problem A. And if it happens on an extremity, it becomes more problematic if that burn goes all the way around that extremity. Because this skin now has got that leathery type of inflexibility to it, if it goes all the way around that extremity, the swelling that starts to occur can only occur so much now. And if that skin doesn't stretch out and allow for that fluid to build up, well, the fluid still builds up, but if the skin doesn't stretch, the fluid now compresses down onto muscles, blood vessels, other nerves, and things like that, and it starts to basically form into what we call compartment syndrome. How you can tell that is that on that affected area and extremity, the pulse will diminish compared to the good side the feeling and motor movement will diminish on the bad side versus the good side. And the skin color will become more pale on the bad side. And also the temperature will become much more cooler compared to a side that's not been burnt. So comparing and contrasting, you get those differences. When you see this, again, protect that burn area, but you need to recognize that this is what's going on and get that patient to definitive care. So that's your third degree burn. Now there is a fourth degree type of burn as well. And here's where, again, the depth becomes through the skin, through the subcutaneous level. But now we're getting into the muscle. We get down to bone sometimes um, in really, really extreme cases. These are the ones that are pretty much unsalvageable. Uh, they can be rehabilitated to a certain degree depending on how deep it goes. But these are the ones that typically these appendages get amputated. These are the patients that uh, have lost complete sensation in that extremity, if that's where it is. And the tissue itself is catastrophically damaged. So there's really not much that we can do in that case for these particular patients. What you see when you have a fourth degree burn is a very catastrophic injury. You have people that get interlocked on high tension wires, for example. You have someone that has a very deep alkali type of burn. Uh, it depends on the source of the, of the actual burn itself. The longer they're in contact with that particular source, whether it's flame, whether it's chemical, whether it's electricity, electricity, doesn't make any difference. That's the factor that's the big variable there. So you may have a, a career where you see numerous fourth degree burns and someone else has a career where they never see a fourth degree burn. But fourth degree, like I say, the source itself is pretty catastrophic and as a result can also be very distracting. So what you have to be paying attention to is that while that injury is very apparent, there had to be a lot of force that probably caused it. So this person may have other associated injuries that you need to make sure you assess for and keep in mind, especially with internal injuries that may be present.